So Arjuna is doing a cost benefit analysis to explain his reasoning why he feels he should not fight. And he's been quite poignant in his arguments. So Yadya Pete na Pashanti Lobho Pata Chetasaha Kulakshaya Krutam Dosham Mitra Drohe Chapatakam Katham Nagayam Asmabi Papa Dasman Nivartitum Kulakshaya Krutam Dosham Prapashat Bhirjanadana Here, Arjuna is anticipating a further argument. And he's saying that they are not thinking the way you're thinking. You know, they are out there to kill you. So, they are out to kill you and your family. It's, it's like almost he's telling him that you didn't start this war. They did. So he's saying that even if that be true, he says that, say, if his party is here. Now he's speaking for himself, but he's also using the plural sense. He's not using the singular. I don't see. But he said they and we. So he says they, and although it's physically in between, but he's thinking in terms of we. So they are blinded by greed. And when they are blinded by greed, because of that, they can't see the, the terrible sin, the terrible harm, the horror of destroying the dynasty. They, because of their blindness, they can't see it. As he says, so their actions yeah, they are doing it because they are blind. But we are not blinded. We are not blinded then and we can see the horror. So how can we participate in this monstrosity? It's, uh, it's not really excusing their actions, but he is basically saying that why should we stoop to their level? Why? They may be blind, but they, we are not like them. So in one sense, he is forestalling the argument where he's saying, you know, that's the way they're dealing with you, tit for tat. He says, no, they're, they're mad. I don't want to get involved in this. I don't want to stoop to their level, which is again a very strong argument. Oh. At one level, if somebody is maddened by something and they are they, they're they're a madman and they are out to kill us. Now they've gone mad, but does that mean we should also go mad? No. Now of course, here Arjuna's reasoning is all going in one direction. That is the nature of our thoughts also. When when once one point of view starts resonating within us, then that's the point of view we start emphasizing. That is the point of view from which we see everything. That's what's happening to Arjuna. He is seeing from that perspective. If you see his reasoning, it's, it's as I said, he's anticipating objections. He says, kingdom, not worth it. Hmm. Why not worth it? Because it's relatives which are, whom I celebrate with. Not just relatives, uh, cherished relatives whom I celebrate with. That, that's why I'm, it's again too much cost. Then after that, he says that aggressors doesn't matter. They are relatives. It doesn't matter to them that they are aggressors, but it matters to me because killing them will lead to sin for me. And now he's saying is, but they are attacking, they are blinded. We aren't. So, now, what is he going to do? If he's not going to fight with them and they're going to fight with him, what is he going to do? 
So that is a question that will come up. But at this stage, he's saying that I can't do this because I can see the catastrophe that will come if we destroy our dynasty. And in the subsequent verses, he will describe that catastrophe that he is seeing. What will happen when the dynasty is destroyed? So these two verses, I'll go to thirty and forty together. We can read the translations and then we'll discuss. Kulakshay pranashanti. कुल धर्म सनातन धर्म नष्टे कुल अधर्मो अभिभव्यवता अधर्मा अभिभवा कृष्ण प्रदुष्यंति कुल स्त्रि Now, some aspects of his reasoning, the sequence of events he is forced. For seeing, they may not be relatable for us. We'll try to make them relatable, but more important than the specifics is the point. Is he is thinking, he is being far sighted. He is claiming that I can see distant catastrophes. So, what are the distant catastrophes that he is seeing? That kulakshay pranashanti kula dharma sanatana so when the dynasty's leaders they are killed then the result is as ongoing degradation that will lead to something else that will lead the dynastic traditions are destroyed so he is not just thinking in terms of uh, infrastructure This is talking in terms of the cultural, social capital. So, if all the elders who taught us how to live, how what how to make choices, what are the what are the ways of our past? This is thousands of years ago, and at that time, in general, people valued the past. That. In, if you see this, one of the defining characteristics of modernity is the idea of progress, and there is some truth to it. But because of this idea of progress, often you modernity looks back at the past with contempt. Or oh, those people were so primitive. So this is the modern vision of time. Whereas the Gita will specifically mention this also. It says the the vision of the past is the past was exalted. With time, things have become worse. So this is traditions vision. You could say is that there is a decline, there is a degradation, that things become worse with time, and that's why when we consider the the past, the past is as much as possible to be preserved, cherished. Hmm. Now, of course, it's not black and white. That even now there are heritage, heritage monuments and archaeological societies and things like that, where we study the past and we try to preserve the past. But it's more in terms of physical remains for the sake of curiosity. Not many people think that oh, the past had some wisdom and we want that. There are a few, but this is the vision over there that those who are the elders, those who are the leaders. they are connected with a glorious past and they are going to pass this down to us and normally we all know that those who are those who are elder everybody is going to die but when there is a war that war means sudden death and if the bigger the war the greater the death hmm? huge war means it's almost generations would be wiped out And if that happens, and generations are wiped out, then it's almost like a 
कलेक्टिव एमनीशिया माई फादर इज नॉट देर माई ग्रैंड फादर इज नॉट देर दिस इज नॉट दिस इज नॉट देर दिस इज अ कलेक्टिव एमनीशिया ऑफ द पास्ट एंड दस वॉट एवर वॉज लर्न फ्रॉम द पास्ट वॉट एवर वॉज डेवलप्ड इन द पास्ट वॉट एवर वॉज वॉट एवर इज वैल्यूबल इन द पास्ट इट वुड ऑल गो अवे सो कुल धर्मा सनादना एंड धर्मे नष्टे कुलम कृष्णम एंड वेन दिस डिग्रेडेशन हैपन्स द नेक्स्ट थिंग हिस्स थिंग इज डेनेस्टिक ट्रांसलेशन देन ही सेज then the word uses adharma dharma can mean irreligion but it can say vice or uh, vice increases virtue decreases so so the idea is that the past traditions are helpful for us in maintaining virtue in life we learn from our past and and this is not something unfamiliar generally we find that say children who are who are not who are born in dysfunctional homes maybe broken families or no no families at all practically speaking then often these children they become ju- juvenile delinquents they may even become violent they may even go towards crime so it doesn't have to happen some of the most inspiring human stories are of people who rise above such adversities but it is true that the modern statistics are showing that you know when there is no one from the past Either it could be parents, grandparents, whatever it is. No one from the past to actually nurture a child. Then what happens? In general, the nurturing means the the virtue within them is supposed to be increased, and the vice is supposed to be decreased. Everybody, when especially when they come to the, the children, they grow up, they come to teenage, and then they grow up. So the children are not taught boundaries. So essentially, how does this happen? It is that in some ways. the past gives us boundaries to function within and within those boundaries we are by living within the boundaries the vices that we have those vices are decreased they are curbed so the their vices are regulated if not eliminated and the virtues are meant to be nourished so he's saying that those will be lost adharma will so adharma is more in terms of the a negative shift in the vice virtue balance in human society it's not simply irreligion because irreligion can seem just like a moralistic judgment but a negative virtue vice imbalance the basic sense of responsibility decency in that that is lost so mm. when children say grow up as adults and become indiscriminately violent or i'm talking about say school shootings in america one of the common correlation one of the common correlators for that is dysfunctional families so it's not just one thing but in general i'm not just talking about a moralistic uh, degradation of uh, you know culture is being lost that's true but what krishna is talking about what arjuna is talking about here is he saying that a social balance that will be lost and then the reasoning goes on so so then he is saying something which can make us a little uncomfortable but let's try to understand what he's saying is that adharma is there when basically this negative when vice is more than when vice becomes more than virtue in society mm-hmm. then there is pradushanti kulastriya that is pollution of women and then from there is unwanted progeny so now this sequence could happen in many different ways one is that when why when vice is more than virtue then you could say in society exploiters are more than protectors Mm-hmm. when there are less protectors then naturally the these exploiters will try to exploit the more vulnerable sections of society and especially exploiters they have greed they have lust so their target will be women mm-hmm. and this is also one of the horrifying realities of war that that whenever there is uh, a war and there's victory of one side quite often there is uh, 
horrendous violation of the women on the other side so it could be that way that when there is when there the society does not have protectors and the aggressors that they are exploiters they could they could exploit now so this this could all happen in a gross way where there is you know physical force and physical violation there but it could also happen in a subtle way subtle way means that that without guiding values then if if there is no nothing to there's no wisdom from the past which gives us a higher vision of life then immediate pleasure uh, that becomes the motive so the pollution of women can happen because you could say it's put in two ways so one is the men may exploit and that is quite common other is that women may also be misled or they may have misconception so we misled they may just have okay if there is no higher wisdom available then no higher purpose of life is there if the purpose is just pleasure then then immediately what happens is okay well, where is the where do i get that pleasure so either way when women are polluted what it leads to is children who are unwanted now what now that unwanted progeny has a could can have different connotations in different context so we could say unwanted means in many ways that there are no parents that happens when say women are exploited and that there's progeny because of that you know in the past there was no no abortion available uh, there's not a justification of abortion but this is a hard yeah rea- not no the harsh reality that children that they just may have no their family no parents just have mothers who are desolate no fathers are there or it could be the people who are parents that they are not not capable of being parents they're not mature enough they're not then basically for them they have children but they just ca- just can't take care of children so they feel that children cramp my lifestyle so they are they are basically not capable means you could say not ready for children hmm? so what happens is they're not ready and they have children and then the children can feel unwanted mm. and you know it's it's in one sense to grow up in a in a world where we are not valued that's bad enough but to grow up in a home where we are not valued where we are not wanted there are few things which can be as devastating for a child psyche as that <clears throat> so he is saying that this is all this is the disaster that i foreshadow all this will happen and then eventually when he will talk about when society is filled with such unwanted children then society will be become entirely devastated he will talk about that in the next text it's it's a very sobering grim kind of prognosis that he is giving we talked about two main points today that first was he saying that they they are greedy we aren't therefore even if they fight we shouldn't hmm? so in one sense he's saying that we are in one sense we are not blind they are blind we are in a better situation he's saying we are not i'm not blind to disaster to impending disaster that can come if we go follow through with this war and then what is the disaster that described in the this next series of verses that he says that if leaders are killed then traditional boundaries are lost traditional boundaries lost so it could be about for everyone for men may not learn to discipline themselves and may have no one to discipline them it could be women also everybody can become undisciplined and lost and then there is pollution is exploitation of women or there could be uh, misleading of women in either way and then it leads to 
unwanted progeny and that is the recipe for a disastrous society that we'll discuss in the next session